Hello, and welcome to our Cotting Conversation. My name is Lindsay Casavant. I'm the Marketing Director here at Cotting School, and we have got a great conversation for you tonight. I can't wait for you to meet so many members of the team focused on the transition to adulthood for students and families here at Cotting School. Um, since our virtual room is so full, does everyone want to turn on their video for a minute and give a wave so we can show our group before we meet? Hey, so nice to see you all. Um, so these are the faces of everyone you're going to get to meet. We'll save their intros for the conversation that we have. Um, so if you guys want to just click off video and, and we'll bring you back in just a minute. Um, what I want to share with you before we get deep into the conversation is that here at Cotting, we love visitors at any time. Um, obviously, right now we're not having visitors at school, uh, but we hope that that will happen again someday soon. But in the meantime, we do invite you to reach out to any of us at any time uh, to learn more about Cotting. We serve students um, over a, a wide age span, so ages three to 22, um, with a variety of cognitive and or physical disabilities. Um, our program, again, is really wide ranging and we have a continuum of services. So I wanna at this time invite my colleague, Tim Richmond to join me. Um, hey, Tim. Hey, Lindsay, how you doing? Good, how are you? You're doing well today. Uh, just as we were getting started, I was mentioning the continuum of services here at Cotting, and you represent a, a big piece of that that's um, not part of our day program or our boarding program at Hope House, but really the Cotting Consulting arm. Do you want to mention that and introduce yourself? Sure, absolutely. I'm uh, Tim Richman, the Outreach Coordinator for Cotting Consulting. So we provide supports and services for districts, um, collaboratives, organizations all throughout Massachusetts. And, um, and we're currently in a little over 25 different uh, communities right now and still providing services you know, throughout the pandemic um, virtually. So um, it's a wonderful uh, opportunity to, to connect with many different districts. Super, super. Um, so that's one corner of cotting, but uh, tonight's conversation or, or the conversation right now for those of you who are tuning in at any point in time is, is really going to focus on transition at cotting. Um, and I want to mention right up front that we have an event that's open to all. It's happening on March 3rd, so a little less than a week away. Um, you can find out more about it at cotting.org slash transition. Um, you'll hear a little bit about it peppered throughout this conversation, but we want to invite you all to participate in that. Uh, I may have mentioned the wrong date. It's March 10th. I may, may have said the 13th, but uh, March 10th. So make a note of that. If you're interested in joining us, we would love to have you for that. Uh, but Tim, I'm going to hand it over to you so that we can, we can get digging into some conversation about transition to adulthood and, and kind of the team here and what they do to support students. That's great. Thanks, Lindsay. Let's, let's bring on uh, Mr. Tuber. Are you there with us? Hi, Tim. Say hello and introduce yourself to the folks that are watching today. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Tuber. I'm the director of transition services here at Cotting School. That's great. Mike and I go, go way back. We've uh, worked together for, for many years and used to work in classrooms together as a staff therapist myself and a classroom teacher. So it's, uh, it's great to, to see you and get a chance to uh, catch up a little bit here. Um, as we talk a little bit more about um, what happens uh, in vocation and the vocational program at Cotting School, can you tell us a little bit about you know, some of the big picture goals that, that you have? Sure, for the students that we work with here, um, specifically in the vocational department, but really all throughout um, the school, we're really focused on uh, working with students and families on the vision for that individual student and really figuring out how to leverage our programming and our resources here on to best support the future goals for the student. Um, every year at the IEP and really throughout the year, uh, really honing in on um, the expectations for the future and the experiences needed on how to reach those goals. 
That's great. What, what age range does that usually start at in the planning process? So it's really, um, you know, under discussion uh, very early on at, at age 14, it's really incorporated into the IEP. Um, we start working with students in the vocational department in middle school, which can be at as young as age 10 here at Conning. That's great. And, and so you have like a, a general overview of the vocational program. Tell us a little bit about off-campus opportunities versus on-campus uh, exploration. Sure, it really grows as a student um, spends their time here. Um, at middle school, we're doing group projects. We're working all together um, on a common goal. It might be something that needs to happen every week here at school, um, a delivery job, things like that. Um, as students get into our upper school, age 14, 15, uh, we have individual assignments for them. Um, we might uh, utilize different parts of the building as learning spaces for them. We might be able to do some work on the grounds, uh, working in different offices. And um, at that point, we start to think about um, the off-campus work experiences, which we offer, which typically start around age 16. And that's really where the vision, once again, comes really into to play because we're, we're thinking about uh, the areas of interest for that individual and what things that they would like to learn about and practice. So we're very fortunate to have a lot of off-campus um, partners who host our students and their job coaches and really uh, having authentic work experiences um, that then um, you know, get a little more in-depth uh, as a student gets into uh, age 18 where they have two opportunities weekly uh, to do these work experiences. And so by the time a student is finished, um, you know, hopefully they've gotten to see uh, quite a number of work sites and how they operate. That's great. And when we talk about the off-campus experiences, how are the students at Cotting uh, supported out in the, the community? So typically we look at um, two students and one job coach as kind of our core model. We okay. do learn a lot from adult services and the models that they use, and we want to have our students be as independent as possible. Um, but we do rely on our job coaches for transportation and supervision. Um, for many, many places that we go to, we're working directly with the individuals at those job sites, um, just alongside of them as they're doing their tasks. Um, and that could be anything from, you know, outdoor landscaping work to supporting uh, the work of preschools to working in an office and uh, helping with animal care. So really a nice uh, variety of opportunities for our students. That's great. So many, I've seen so many happy students coming back in the halls, um, you know, in, in prior years uh, during our, when, when we get back to typical times, uh, really just so excited about their work experiences and, and telling me about it. So it's, it's really wonderful to see. Now, how does this all tie into kind of the interdisciplinary process that we have? Because you have to be able to kind of interface and talk with some of our, our teachers and our, um, our staff uh, at kind of the instructional level. How does that kind of play in? Sure. So if we think about a student being out in the community really as um, the chance for them to really put their skills to work, then all those skills are being built uh, throughout their, their time working with um, our teachers and our therapists. And so as a team, we're always talking about um, supports a student might need in the community, certain tools or uh, strategies that support that student. And then instructionally, um, a, so much focus is about, um, you know, the community and different roles that people have in the community and how these things are connected. So the, the instruction really supports um, our students as they get ready to go off campus. Uh, the preparation that the teachers do um, is fantastic in getting students in the, in the mindset to go, you know, to go out into the world and really show their best selves and, and, um, and show their skills in different That's places. That's really great. I feel like I could talk to you about this for forever, Mike, because it's such a great uh, lead off here in the conversation about transition. Well, thank you. Let's bring in Sajel and Lola to talk a little bit more about what's happening um, at the level, you know, in school for instructional support. We've got Sajel. Hi, Sajel. Hey, Tim. How are you? Good. Hi, Lola. 
So as we talk a little bit more, like how do we determine, um, you know, the instructional supports for cutting students um, as they age up into the programs? Sure. Uh, so who, who would like to, I'm sorry, who would like to tackle that one? Is that Yeah, is that sure. I, I can start. I'm, I'm actually just going to introduce myself. Um, so I'm Sajal Costa. I'm the director of post-secondary pathways at Cotting. And, um, you know, I've been a classroom teacher at Cotting for, for many years. And uh, this position opened up. And, and so a big part of this position is really working on the transition component, as well as uh, working with our capstone program. Um, when And the capstone program is fairly new. Uh, this is our fourth year having the program that really focuses on our older students, the 18 to 22 year olds. Um, and Lola is one of our, our finest capstone teachers. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of where we try to focus on is with our, with, you know, the student's vision. Um, Lola, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the the parts of that and how we incorporate the vision? Yeah, sure. So really, I I feel like I'm going to be echoing what Mike has said already. Um, we really want, especially as our students are getting older, for their goals and our teaching and their learning to reflect their vision and the goals that they have and the goals that their family have. So we're really trying to create a person-centered plan for their transition. So for each student, that's really going to look different. Sure. Um, our goal is that we want to best prepare them for whatever they're going to do after they graduate cotting. For some students, that might be going to college. For other students, that might be having a job or volunteering. And for some students, that might be looking at a day program or something like that. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, there's, there's never a one size fits all approach. It has to be so, as you, you know, talk about person centered planning, it's so, so important. So maybe um, we can speak a little bit about like how we teach that or what is the curriculum um, in talking about different activities in the community? How does that get handled? Yeah, so, you know, again, this because there isn't a one size fits all type of approach. We we pull from a lot of different curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at, you know, we've started looking at a lot at charting the life course and incorporating components from uh, that program. There's uh, the unique systems for learning. We use the life-centered education curriculum, the LCE. Um, Lola, help me, help me out here. I'm sure I'm blanking on some others that we definitely use. Sure. Um, and I, I think the really amazing thing about Cotting is that we have incredible teachers who are using these curriculum resources and they are planning and helping their students to have these really awesome real life experiences, um, community experiences to teach those important transition skills, um, you know, planning MBTA trips with their students. So students can learn to take the train, buy tickets, go into the city, make a purchase, shop at a store, um, scheduling the ride to go to work, going grocery shopping, going to a bank, visiting day programs or college campuses. Um, all of those things are happening in classrooms and out in the community. That's great, so it's, it's real world experience. It's not just yeah. this, oh, we're gonna simulate, what it's like. Now you might yeah. maybe pre-teach that or obviously talk about that before going out, but you're doing real world activities here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's um, that's that's great. What other, um, if, is there anything else that you wanna share with us about what's happening You know, in those transition activities in the classroom? Anything else that you could share with us, either Sajel or Lola? Mm -hmm. Lola, I think you you gave a really good snapshot of, of these things. You know, I think when we think about transition, right, we know that it's this bigger process and it takes years. And, you know, we in Capstone get students at such a critical age where it's really helping to kind of start really fine tuning their vision. They've, you know, started working on their vision at an earlier age. And, you know, here we kind of start making it more of the the very detailed vision and how, you know, how to establish that takes takes some time. And so all of these experiences through Capstone, but 
you know, and the and the off campus, you know, opportunities also provide or you know, begin in upper school with community inclusion trips. Um, but you know, with with Capstone, we we really try to focus on the individual student and and make sure that they know what are all of the options available. And it's taking the curriculum that they know in our state standards and really applying it to more of the life situations and you know it's that question of why do we learn things and what how can we use them um and i think i'm sure that kathy and pam are going to touch on this a little bit yeah. but like really under helping families and students to understand that transition is not an end game it's a process and it takes a long time and it's about the experiences that you have along the way, um, you know, as much as it is the final destination. That's right, <laughs> Not certainly, really about that. Yeah. absolutely. When you think about it, because our students maybe begin planning at the first talk during an IEP meeting at age 14, all the way up to 22. So you, you're talking a good amount of time and a good, and a good lead up to get there and get prepared. So it is so important. Well, Sejal and Lola, thanks so much for, for sharing that information. I think everyone's going to find um, a lot of value in, in, in a peek into what goes on um, at Cotting Day program. So thanks so much. Let's, um, let's pull in Pam and Kathy. Welcome. Kathy, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Would you yeah. do a, a quick introduction so that everyone Absolutely. knows? Yeah, I'm Kathy Tyra, and I'm... Uh, the guidance counselor at Cotting School, a uh, position I've had for um, 28 years. And um, I would like to say that I started in Boston and, and I feel really grateful to be able to work for such a organization that has been on the cutting edge right from the beginning. Um, that edge keeps changing. Um, and I also wanna say that um, Lola is one of those fantastic teachers that she was talking about. And um, they are, the teachers are so creative, use so much technology and create such specialized materials from, from the curriculums that they mentioned. But those curriculums don't, aren't all ready to go. They have to be created and it's so individualized and I'm always in awe of what they make. That's the truth, isn't it? Yeah, and she is a fantastic teacher. Pam, can you tell us a little bit about yourself as well for all the uh, folks that are watching? Sure, happy to. I'm Pam Barron. I'm the Family Support Coordinator at Cotting, and um, I've been doing that for um, almost 23 years. Um, I'm also the parent of a now adult who has a disability, and so I feel like I bring a perspective to providing support to parents. And, um, and so I'm the person who's sort of there to um, provide connections and information and guidance um, from the time that a, a family comes to Cotting and, um, and really um, value being able to be part of this fantastic team, you know, for, for planning for a transition or just planning for um, a child who has complex needs, um, it takes a team. And um, this is a really strong interdisciplinary team working on transition at Cotting. Absolutely. I've always felt that there's always someone that you can go to and, and both Kathy and, and Pam, you're always a, an amazing resource for all of our families. So Kathy, let's start with you for a little bit um, and talk about that support that you're able to provide families. And maybe we didn't really get into it too much, but about speaking about those key organizations that are out there that might seem a little bit daunting for some families um, as you speak about transition mm -hmm. um, and post-22. Sure. So um, I guess what I would say is that um, I like to take that vision that has been created by the teachers, by Mike and all the other, the whole team um, that students are beginning to have and, and figure out, well, now that we know that that's the vision, we have some ideas, we know that that vision will evolve and change, but now we have to get practical and how are we going to put that into action? And um, so that process starts with the, the IEP team deciding and thinking about together, which includes the parents and the teachers and all the therapists and the school district, everyone. Um, what is the most important adult service agency um, for these students to be referred to? And at Cotting, we generally use 
one of two, there are many of them. And so there are times we use others, but the majority of them is the Department of Developmental Services or uh, Mass Rehabilitation Commission. And that process begins with the IEP process to um, with a form that's called a 688 referral form and the school districts um, send those out with a pack of information after the team has recommended which team could be a lead agency. You may be able to get support from more than one, but that's sort of the beginning. Um, from that process, we move on to, um, I, and I reach out to parents around the time that that is happening, you know, as they're becoming adults, but they're not yet 22. Um, that's around the time that I'll reach out to begin that process with them. Parents are, are welcome to reach out to me at any age to begin talking about what the process is like and how to determine things and how to navigate it. Because really what I see my role of it is, I've often talked about, you know, there's sort of state speak and there's cotting speak. And um, sometimes I like to be a translator of that, you know, to kind That's of great. just help parents navigate those systems. Um, yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. That's really, really wonderful. Like I said, it can be a, a daunting uh, task. And, and I think that's the message overall. And what we're talking about today is that we're with you and Cotting is with you throughout the entire process. And we want to prepare all of our students post 22. So Pam, when we talk a little bit about the supports that you provide, um, you know, through my experience in working at Cotting, you have been an invaluable resource to parents. Um, what are some of the um, uh, seminars, uh, I, I say seminars, but what are some of the panels that you've created over your years at Cotting to, to kind of bridge uh, parents together? Yeah, thanks for asking that. Um, I think of myself as well as kind of a connector, a connector of people connecting parents to resources. And also, um, I think one thing Cotting does well, and um, I think we all have a role in it, but it's as family support coordinator, it feels really important to me to be a place where um, parents feel like they have resources readily available to them. That if they have a question about something, if they have, um, uh, if they're feeling like they should be some doing something, but they're not quite sure what they should be doing, that they have people to reach out to, who will also sort of understand that, um, as, as everybody has said, transition is a process. Um, I know as a parent, and I know the parent at, parents at Cotting know that kind of from the moment of birth or diagnosis, you're already thinking about transition. It's one of the differences of the sort of trajectory we take as parents. Um, what will happen to my child? How will my child be functioning when they're an adult? So there are a lot of feelings that go along with this too. So we wanna be able to have a place where we can sort of hold those feelings together and support, provide support throughout the process. Um, you know, I've sort of developed a little bit of knowledge about the transition before the transition, which is turning 18, where there are a lot of decisions parents need to make That's about right. relationship, about SSI, um, about um, sort of refining that vision for moving from 18 to 22 to post 22, the adult agencies, it can feel so complicated. Um, but we're really here to um, kind of provide a, some guidance and, and kind of a map of, you know, what kinds of things um, uh, can be taken on first, second, and third, and, um, and a kind of a roadmap for how to do that. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, we have enormous resources among our parent community, our family community. And um, we, um, are, we tr always are trying to make connections between people who are a little farther on in the process with people who are looking to begin a certain part of the process of transition um, and uh, maintain really good connections with our alumni parents who can also be resources, parent to parent resources for this process. So hopefully all of that provides a kind of holding environment for something that can feel kind of anxiety provoking at times. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I, I I can't agree more. You know that the the ability to to bring and uh, bring these parents together, and so we can talk about what their experience is, and maybe they're further along the line as you shared. It it's so valuable, and um, and that's one of those kind of things that doesn't get expressed enough about the Cotton community at at large. We have a great teaching staff, but our family network is is really important. Well, Pam and Kathy, thank you so much. You've both been extremely, um, extremely wonderful in sharing your experiences here, and you're always providing a calm, and I can just go into a little zen right now between talking with you both about it all. It's great. Um, as we uh, will bring uh, back Lindsay, and we can talk a little bit more if there's any um, kind of parting thoughts as we, you know, share a little bit more about uh, transition. We've had a, a good kind of start to finish on on what the process looks like. Who are the key players at Cotting School? Um, so, um, you know, Lindsay, what, were there any questions that came up at, at all on Facebook here? Yeah, Tim, there aren't. Um, I just took a peek in the chat, always keeping an eye on that. I didn't see any <laughs> comments or questions that we can answer right now. Um, but I hope that anyone watching this, um, I know certainly people watch it in real time, but most of our views come in people watching the playback. We also add these to our, um, our Cotting website at cotting.org slash conversations. Um, Tim, I think this is about our fifth cotting conversation yeah. that we've logged. Um, something we've been doing since we can't have folks visiting inside the school and we've really uh, missed that opportunity to just kind of open the doors and, and yeah. help share information. Um, so I hope anyone tuning in can um, feel free to reach out to us if, if you are tuning in, if you learned a little something or, or have questions and want to know more. Um, we have been back in session in person uh, following lots of safety guidelines, um, but, but students here are at the day program. Um, our board and boarding students are at Hope House, um, and our teams are here and, and always happy to answer questions and, and connect with people. That's right. And thinking about the continuum of all of our services, obviously today is speaking about transition, but anyone is um, always available. If you had a question for, for Pam, you could try to connect with her um, through our website or admissions. Um, Elizabeth Russell is always available to field any questions about what program openings that we currently have. Definitely. Um, you know, Tim, one of the things I was just thinking back, listening to everyone, I, I just have such an affinity for our colleagues. They're, they're great at talking about what they do. Um, it's, it's a privilege to see everyone in action with their students. And, uh, you know, you often meet families and alums from Cotting who say, Cotting were the best years of my life. And, <laughs> and really what everyone here is, is planning for with students and their families is for for those best years to continue even beyond. Cotton. Absolutely. Yeah. That's We'd truth. love to have everyone back for a quick wave out. <laughs> See who, who, there we go. There's everyone. Thank you, Lola, Sajel, Pam, Mike, Kathy, and Tim. Thanks so much for a great moderation. This was excellent. It's a pleasure to talk with everyone. So we good to see you all. Good to see you. And uh, we hope to hear from you all sometime soon. And keep an eye out for that transition fair coming up March 10th. Um, we'll definitely add the link in the comments. Thanks again, everyone. Bye, everybody.